welcome along to this interview where we're going to talk about um, having lodgers in your own home and I'm joined by Tom, co-founder of Ideal Flatmate. And Tom, I think it's interesting um, for landlords to consider taking uh, in lodgers and I'm speaking from experience here because myself and Nick, when we bought our own home in uh, 2003, uh, we actually bought a four bedroomed house with three ensuite bathrooms because it really, really lent itself to letting out to lodgers. And we wanted to be able to afford a larger house um, and have lodgers contributing rent to um, help towards our mortgage. So Nick and I are actually very big advocates of this. Um, and there's actually advantages uh, to landlords to rent out rooms in their own home, isn't there? Particularly if you're trying to build a portfolio and you're looking for extra cash flow. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the biggest user groups on Ideal Flatmate is actually living landlords. So it's you know not just professional landlords, but... You know, almost accidental landlords, people mm. with a larger property and think, oh, it'd be good to have a lodger or someone else to share one of the rooms. And you're right, there's some big benefits, such as the rent-a-room scheme. So the government actually pays you, in effect, or gives you big tax breaks to bring lodgers into your property. Yep. Um, so it's definitely one to, to look out for. And yeah, I mean, it's a good way, if you're thinking of building a property portfolio, to you know try it out, have someone in for a few months or a few years. Mm -hmm just to learn about you know, the regulations around having tenants in your own home um, and managing tenants. You know, there, are, there can be quite a lot of issues that arise. So bringing on a lodger as an initial first step is a really good mm. idea. I agree with you, particularly for somebody um, that's just starting out and is looking to kind of hone their landlord's skills. I think it is a really good way to, to, to learn um, and to understand, as you say, some of the more... Uh, nuances yeah. uh, of dealing with tenants. Um, the rent -a room scheme, we should say, is a government allowance of 7,500 of income from renting a room that is tax-free. So it, it is a good incentive. Mm. Um, and I think, you know, tenant selection is very important as well. When I answer a door to a prospective lodger, um, I don't think it's too much different to how I would kind of look at somebody that was thinking of, you know, renting a whole dwelling, uh, me as a, as a, as a landlord. Um, I think there is that element of, of gut instinct, how you first react to somebody. Um, but it's interesting, on your website, you actually have almost like a matchmaking service, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the main reason we set Idle Flatmate up, was to match up potential flatmates. And as I mentioned previously, you know, we did it from a flat sharer's perspective so mm -hmm. that people could buddy up. But we've been amazed how much has been used by living landlords to, you know, filter out tenants mm -hmm. so that people now, as you say, it's such an important decision who potentially comes into your home as a lodger. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to give people a bit more information before they went on that first step of meeting people. Mm -hmm. So we have, a, you know, people can answer 20 questions about their own living habits and then you're given, you're thrown into a bucket and you're matched up with people that have taken those questions as well, mm -hmm. depending on the answers. Mm -hmm. And we also reveal a lot of information about the potential person on their uh, profile pages. So you've got photos, you've got interests, you've got a bit about their background. Mm -hmm. So as you said, you know, people can make a more informed decision before they go on that initial first meeting mm -hmm. with people. Mm -hmm. I do think it's interesting because from my perspective, um, it's great to have that additional cash flow. Um, certainly in Guildford, where we live, we can rent out an ensuite room um, for around £700 a month. Um, and that's very attractive to somebody uh, who doesn't want the responsibility of an entire flat paying council tax, etc., and all the other utility bills. Um, so it really does create actually a win-win situation to rent out rooms for people in certain circumstances. Yeah, and it's beneficial for the tenants as well, because mm -hmm. sometimes you don't want to go through the whole stress of renting out full property yourself, mm -hmm. um, especially if you're new to a city. You know, it's a nice way to get into a city, True. to become a lodger, live with somebody who owns a property. So, as you say, there's, you know, it's a win-win and there's benefits to it from all angles. There is. I, I think it's always interesting that... Um, you know, when we started out with lodgers in our home, certain members of our family went, oh, you're mad. Why do you want to share your home mm. with somebody else? But I think if you've got a clear vision of where you want to go in life and, and how you want to achieve that, you, you will, um, you know, you will make some sacrifices. And I think that 
And I can say this from experience of 14 years of having lodgers, that if you find the right person to share with, um, it can actually be a, a really uh, good experience. And indeed, our current lodgers have been with us for, um, I guess, about four years now, and they even look after our cats, for instance, when we're away. So, you know, I can understand people being reticent, but if, um, if it's a kind of way forwards for you to help you get more cash flow, to maybe buy more properties, it'd be worth considering. Mm. Yeah, and we've had some amazing feedback from landlords that have become living landlords, um, very similar to what you've said, that you know, they were a bit apprehensive at first, and even neighbours or people on the, their own road said, oh, are you turning your house into an HMO? What does this mean? Um, but I think people realised pretty quickly that, you know, you can assess the people that are going to be living with you. Um, mm. You can decide whether they are the right fit. Mm. If things don't work out, you know, it doesn't have to be forever. Quite. But, you know, it's a really good um, step. So, Tom, I'm really pleased that you mentioned uh, creating an HMO if a landlord has live-in lodgers. I think we should touch on that. It does crop up from on property tribes from time to time. Um, I think the first thing we would say is check with your lender. Most lenders don't have a problem with up to two lodgers. Um, and also, uh, people are sometimes worried that they're going to create an HMO. They're right to be worried, and they need to check. Yeah, I think that's it. Just make sure you check in your local area what the exact rules are. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people have asked us at Ida Flatmate as well, you know, what are the rules around create, creating an HMO? Mm -hmm. And there are no sort of fixed rules. So it's hard for us to advise until we know exactly what borough you're in. Mm -hmm. Uh, because they're, they're literally you can be from one street to another and it's a different set of rules. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, our advice would be just to check online, check with your local borough what the regulations are. Now, um, I think it would be interesting to talk about the type of property that's suited, um, certainly for lodgers, if, if you're a landlord who wants to rent out rooms. Um, and I would say the first thing is, you know, en suites command a premium. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, if, if the listing on, on our site so far has got an ensuite then people are much more likely to go for it mm -hmm. and we see a far higher inquiry rate for properties with rooms that are en suite 100 mm -hmm. percent mm -hmm. and also i would say good parking as well yeah i mean Less we're so in London, yeah right? i was going to say because we've been so london focused it's pretty rare to <laughs> get parking but you know if you've got a property with parking in london it's a serious premium mm -hmm. um but yeah you know all amenities help so any sort of add-ons that you can list with your property will create a premium for you mm -hmm. and mean you can command a far higher monthly rental cost. Absolutely. So if there's a landlord uh, watching this interview, they're interested, they like the idea of perhaps uh, taking on a lodger or two to generate another income stream, we've already mentioned the tax benefits of doing so, um, how would they get the most out of Ideal Flatmate? Um, you've got an option on there to list a property as a live-in landlord, so they would go there. Yes, yeah, so exactly. After you click add a listing, you asked what sort of a person you are going to be listing a room. Are you an agent? Are you a live out landlord, professional, or a live in landlord? Mm -hmm. So you would select the live in landlord category. Um, there's a different route into the site depending on who you are. So mm -hmm. you'd be asked slightly different questions to whether you're a professional landlord or a live in landlord. And yeah, I mean, that's probably the user group that we've had the best feedback from in terms of the matching works really, really well for them mm -hmm. because it is people actually living in their home. So it really matters, um, you know, who the people are that are going to be living with you. If mm -hmm. You don't necessarily want someone with completely different living habits to you, living on the same roof as you. Mm -hmm. So I'd definitely say, yeah, give it a try and, you know, see what happens. Mm. I think one thing that we learned through our experiences of, of, of having lodgers is um, not to be afraid to really spell out the nature of the household. For instance, um, we always tell people that we have three cats. Okay. Um, we say that we're not party central um, and that, you know, we do want peace and quiet ourselves and that the house is suited to mm. a professional person that's perhaps looking for, uh, you know, a peaceful, good quality surrounding. So I think the more that people can... Um, give details of the kind of makeup of the household and, and the kind of people that are going to fit in there, the more likely they are to get a better fit. Yeah, and I think honesty is really important because there's no point in the application process pretending you're something completely different to what you are. Mm. Um, you know, if you are a bit messy, then maybe just be honest and don't go and live with someone who says they're a bit of an OCD freak, <laughs> you know, because it is going to, you're going to have clashes pretty mm. soon. 
Um, and that's something we say, you know, we were challenged when we set it up, you know, how do you ensure people are honest in the f answers they give to your questions? And we do, you know, it's, it is self-policing to a certain extent. We can't force people to be honest, but we make it very clear that it's in your benefits to be honest mm -hmm. during the application process. Mm -hmm. And Tom, just as we close out here talking about um, landlords and, and live-in lodgers, I do think it's a, an interesting time to have this conversation because landlord margins are being squeezed. Um, and I think that one way landlords can survive is to look at all of their assets and make sure that they're performing to the optimum um, degree. And we've already mentioned that some people are a bit reticent about having a lodger, but actually I think if you find the right person who fits in with your household, um, it's a really great way to generate more income at a time when landlords could be struggling. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we've touched on some of the other tax benefits you mm -hmm. get, but it's also another hedge against Section 24. Yep. And we've seen, you know, all the furore around that and all the problems with landlords really getting squeezed. Mm -hmm. And you're right, you know, the more ways that you can increase your portfolio, the better. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this chat about um, living lodgers with landlords um, with Tom from Ideal Flatmate. And as I mentioned, Nick and I have been doing this for around 14 years. And, and actually, Tom, we've, I think we've had maybe two cases of people in all of that time where they really didn't fit in with mm. our household. And of course, um, with a live-in lodger, they're on a license, not a short, short-hold tenancy agreement. So it's a very kind of different scenario to somebody that's got a whole dwelling. Mm. Um, and if you do uh, have a, a, you know, a lodger that you don't get on with, it's actually relatively easy to um, ask them to leave, isn't it? Yeah, you know, if things aren't working out, you know, it's, it's easier than if you've gone through the whole pro legal process mm. of, you know, renting somewhere uh, for the long term. Mm. So, you know, there isn't a huge amount of risk. It's mm. definitely worth giving it a go. If it's really terrible after a few months, you can always part your ways. Mm. But, you know, hopefully if you go through the right checks, you have a, you know, due diligence on that person, have a few meetings, make sure that you are a good fit, mm. then it can be a really great uh, thing to do. Mm.